Hi, uh, welcome to the second video in the Scilab and XPass uh, tutorial series. So uh, we introduced Scilab and XPass in the last video. Now this uh, video will mainly be about getting familiarized with the graphical user interface of Scilab, how it looks, uh, what menu bars are there, what windows uh, you can see. So uh, I started up my uh, Scilab and uh, so the first thing I'd like to start with is uh, this window right here. So uh, this is the console. This is the main area for uh, program execution. So uh, I'll just start out with a few basic commands. Uh, so let's say a equals one. If you press enter, it's immediately executed. Okay, so you can see the console output. So uh, one thing I would like to bring your attention to is the variable browser right here. Okay, so the variable browser always keeps a track of uh, whatever variables you have in your program currently. So uh, let's define another variable b equals to. So you see that b is automatically added to the variable browser. So you have the value and the data type. The default data type for any numeric value is double. Uh, so let's say if we were to compute a plus b. So you see, since we are not storing the result of this arithmetic operation in any third variable C or otherwise, uh, Scilab has its own default uh, variable, uh, which is ANS, A-N-S. So uh, let's say we now define C equals A plus B. Right. So you see that whenever we execute something on the console, it's executed one line at a time, which might not always be like what we want optimally. So uh, on the console, a way of doing it is, uh, let's say, okay, let's start with some fresh values. Let's say x equals 5. And uh, suppose we don't want each line being executed. So what you do for that is you end each line with a semicolon, right? So then it's not executed anymore. x equals 5 and let's say y equals 6. Again, semicolon. And then we say z equals x plus y and now we want it to run so no semicolon and we hit a return right so that would be one way of ensuring that multiple lines uh, are executed at once however most of the times uh, what we might want is we might want a script separately written and then called uh, once it's time for its execution so for that we use uh, the notes editor uh, or the sci notes right so at any point of time, if you find anything missing, just go to uh, applications on the file bar and you have all of these things, right? So you also have a command history, which I'll just bring it up. So in the command history, you can see it's a history of all the commands all the past commands that we have had. Right. So at any point, you can dock any of them in your system by just dragging the black part and putting it down in any part of the system. So yeah, that's how you can do it or you can remove it if you want as well. Uh, there are other windows. There's the graphics window, which we'll be exploring in the next video. Uh, we have the file browser. Uh, the file browser is where you can go to for your current directory, change directories if you want to upload some documents, if you want to save some documents there. So that's the file browser. And uh, we'll get introduced to XCOS uh, a little bit later. Uh, so we have the variable browser I've shown you, command history, yes, and file browser, yeah. We'll talk about Atom's module manager later on in the course as well. Uh, so we also have a MATLAB to Scilab translator to make the transition uh, more seamless between MATLAB and Scilab. Mostly it's the same, but uh, sometimes there are differences which need to be chopped out. Uh, so that'll be it for this video. Uh, we'll go to Scinotes in the next video. Thank you for watching.